class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we'll be doing another player review. And today we have arrived at Brent Burns. And I know this is going to be a bit of a controversial take. I'm sure a lot of people think that Brent Burns will deserve even less than the grade that I will end up giving him. I mean, people would probably give him even in the D category or potentially even an F for some fans who really are that upset with how Brent Burns performed this season. But we have to take into account everything surrounding what Brent Burns was forced to take on this year and it definitely sort of puts things a bit more into perspective compared to past seasons where Brent Burns had seen a lot more of success. So Brent Burns obviously arrived to the San Jose Sharks in that Minnesota Wild trade in the 11-12 season or at the start of the 11-12 season at the draft that year and it was a bit of a slow progression for Brent Burns at the time the Sharks still had Dan Boyle as their top you know uh power play quarterback, I guess you could say. But once Dan Boyle had moved on around the 14-15 season, Brent Burns began to come into his own as the top offensive guy for the San Jose Sharks. And the 15-16 season was the one that really sort of marked the breakout for Brent Burns. 27 goals that year with 75 points. And then it only got better over the next few years. The 16-17 season, 29 goals, and he would win the James Norris that year. The 17-18 season, still very successful, though slightly less in terms of stats, about 67 points before the 18-19 season really capped it off with his points per game season of 83 points in 80 two games. However, since then, there has been a very notable drop-off in terms of offense performance from Brent Burns. Now, is that just because that the Sharks have gotten just generally worse? Of course, but there's also been the departure of Joe Pavelski, which was a huge part of Brent Burns being able to actually get some goals as well as some assists from his shots from the point, as well as a departure from the more defensive centric offensive style that Pete DeBoer was bringing throughout those few years and Bob Booner has moved away from that and much more to a forward centric style which has not allowed Brent Burns to get as many points as he did in the past and also because while during the 15-16 season to the 18-19 season the San Jose Sharks had Brent Burns as their top offensive guy when it came to the defensive zone draws Brent Burns was not really tasked with taking many of those it was the pairing of Vlasic and Justin Braun which who were still pretty solid during these years to to be the ones to shut down the other team's top players. So one stat that we can look at is the offensive zone start percentage. So basically what percentage of the faceoffs that you come on the ice for are in the offensive zone compared to the neutral and defensive zones. Now this season for Brent Burns, considering he has now taken on the role as the top not only offensive guy but defensive guy for the San Jose Sharks just due to you know Justin Braun departing a couple of years ago and the massive decline of Mark Edward Vlasic, Brent Burns' offensive zone start percentage was about 40% this season. And to put that into perspective with past years, in the 16-17 season, the year he won the James Norris, his offensive zone start percentage was 61%, much larger than it is this season. In the 18-19 season, the year he got 83 points in 82 games, his offensive zone start percentage was 68%, significantly higher than what it was this season. So it just goes to show that in the past, Brent Burns, his game could heavily, heavily focus on the offensive side of things. You know, when Brent Burns was on the bench, it was essentially, all right, we're defensive zone drop, let's just put on Vlasic and Braun, or maybe even our third defensive pairing of, you know, Brendan Dillon, whoever he was with at the time. And then when you had the offensive zone draw, you could take on the well-rested Brent Burns to get that opportunity. However, this season, not really so much the case. Now it is, do we have an offensive zone draw where we need to score? Brent Burns. Do we have a defensive zone draw where we need to prevent a goal? Brent Burns. And so with him getting a lot more of those defensive draws because the Sharks were just generally a worse team than they have been in the past, when you finally do get those, you know, uh, somewhat rare, I guess you could say, offensive zone draws, the coach will sometimes look at Brent Burns huffing and puffing after his defensive zone shift and you'll they'll say, all right, let's get, you know, Eric Carlson on the ice because Carlson is not someone who we are as willing to put on in the defensive zone. His offensive zone start percentage was above 50% this season. So with Brent Burns getting the call in every single situation, we also saw an increase in terms of ice time. He's gotten about a minute higher than what he's gotten in the past few years with the San Jose Sharks. So just in general, with this even further expanded role with Brent Burns and just general decline of the team, him himself, just based on his age, it's hard to, you know, put 
a ton of fault onto Brent Burns, who was always never a hugely gifted defensive player, but he has been shoved into this role as number one guy on a not-so-fantastic Sharks team at this point, and so you do have to cut him a bit of slack there. Moving on to the stats, 56 games played, as Brent Burns has always been in the past. He is just a workhorse, plays every single game for the San Jose Sharks in essentially like every single season that he's been on this team. Got a bit of an Iron Man streak of his own going. Seven goals on the year, which would have been 10 in a full season. A bit low for what Brent Burns, but as I already talked about earlier, it's to be somewhat expected. 22 assists, which would be 32 assists in a full season, and 29 points, which would be 42 points in a full season, which would have been his lowest point total output over 82 games since the 11-12 season with the San Jose Sharks, uh, which was, of course, his first year with that team. Moving on to the plus minus. I talked about the plus minus back with uh, his defensive partner, Mario Ferraro. Mario Ferraro had been a minus six. Brent Burns is a much worse, you know, doubled up at minus 12, but we do have to cut him a bit of slack. As I said, Brent Burns also gets a lot of the opportunities where, for instance, he's trying to tie up the game with the San Jose Sharks to try and get that goal six on five, where Ferraro is probably not on the ice in these situations. Usually it's him with Eric Carlson, and as such, he gets a larger minus there. If we take out all empty net situations, so not only the empty net goals against, but also the empty net goals for, which he's usually on for as well. He's actually a somewhat more respectable minus eight. And when you are the number one defenseman on in essentially every situation for your team on a pretty bad team like the San Jose Sharks were this season, it is no surprise that your plus minus is going to trend more towards the negative side. And the fact that Brent Burns, when we account for things like that empty net, we could also account for the shorthanded goals against, which could sometimes be Brent Burns' fault, but not necessarily always. If you account for those, which he's been on for two against, you can get to a, a similar to Mario Ferraro minus six. And so just in general, not an awful plus minus here for Brent Burns, if that's a stat that you like to look at. And then when we move on to the time on ice, as I pointed out earlier, it is has seen an increase from his previous years with the San Jose Sharks about a minute more than what he had gotten in the past, usually at around, you know, 24 minutes 50 seconds sometimes 25 minutes 10 seconds now up at 26 minutes and 8 seconds so obviously you have to take into account the fact that now he's getting even more penalty kill time now he's getting even more offensive strength time more defensive zone time so he's probably while he's seen the general uptick in terms of time on ice he's also seen his offensive zone time on ice likely go down somewhat as well as his defensive zone ice time come up up significantly compared to previous seasons, which also goes to explain why those point totals might be lower than they were in the past. So when it comes to the grade, obviously, just based on the eye test of what Brent Burns this did this season, we cannot give him the necessarily very high grade, right? He's nowhere near an A. He's definitely not a B plus or even a B player. But you also have to say, you know what, he it did do slightly above average. It wasn't completely terrible with, you know, the player that Brent Burns is at the age that he is and the fact that he's had to take on a much more increased role this season. You have to give him, you know, cut him a bit of slack in this regard. And as such, I will be giving him the grade of a C plus. Class dismissed.